Okay, and we're on. So, welcome to Math 1207, Calculus 2. Um, we're going to go through the syllabus, talk about the class, how things are going to go. Um, so, to first introduce myself, my name is Javon. Um, can you call me Javon? That's fine. You don't have to be a professor, or Mr. Smith, or Javon is fine. Okay, so that's my email, jsmith306 at fordham.edu. That is correct. I am 306th J. Smith <laughs> <laughs> to pass through Fordham. Don't feel special at all. Um, that's my website. So at the website, you're going to want to remember that because that's where I'll be posting things like answers to quizzes, solutions to tests, any announcements, um, handouts that I might give in class. I'll post copies there things of that sort. So the, you should be checking that website regularly. That, that is the general website. You'll just go there and you'll see a list of the classes I'm teaching this semester and you click on your class and you'll see the materials. A copy of the syllabus is already posted there as well. So if you lose your copy or um, anything like that, you can get a copy there. Um, the math department is, the main office is right next door. So that's, I just gave you the location there. And the website is here. Um, there's also the math help room, which I'll be talking about a bit later. It's in 410. So it's through those doors. Once you exit, you go through the doors, and it's the room that's going to be straight ahead, um, 410. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, let's jump to the mean and potatoes. Um, calculators, scientific calculators are allowed. Um, I will try to uh, write my test, though, so that you don't absolutely need a calculator. I would prefer if you try to not use them as much as possible. Um, you might have to use them on homework, but in class, I'd, I'd rather you kind of um, not use them um, to build good habits. Um, the grading chart is here, so that's how your grades will be assigned. Um, but more or less, it's just kind of a guide. I will grade on a curve, um, and I will incentivize things like improvement. So I understand that, you know, it's been, I don't know how, how much of a break you guys had, but you can forget a lot in a month, and sometimes you come back and the first few quizzes, they're not so good, the first test isn't so good, but as long as I see like you're improving over time, I'll take that into account and I might even ignore the first part of the course. So, um, so this grading chart really only applies if like you do the bare minimum, I don't see effort, I don't see you in your office hours, you don't participate in class, you don't attend class regularly, you don't, and then I'm just going to, whatever grade, is in my grade book, and I'm just going to give you the grade based on that number. But otherwise, I really am going to be considering the totality of what you've been doing here and watch your improvements over time and just um, how much effort um, you put into things. Um, so, for um, so more or less, you can, you know, for effort, you can, unless it's an A, like if you're getting an A, it has to be you really get an A. A's are about not only effort, but you have to be getting the results, you have to make the grades. But other than that, you know, you can go from, I'll bump you up from a B minus to a B, or a B to a B plus, or a B minus to a B plus, for things other than, you know, you, you, you get the idea. It's going to be um, really going to look at how you've been doing, progressing over the course of the um, semester. And if you're really getting things after a while. Even if you have had a rocky start, I don't want that to actually hold anyone back. Um, how your grade is co um, made up is actually here. Um, so I will have quizzes, and those will account for 20% of your grade. Um, the quizzes are weekly. You'll have a quiz every week, okay? Un unless that week we're having a test, you'll have a quiz. So expect them. I'm gonna be testing you all the time to make sure you're following what we're doing in class. And so expect a quiz every week, every Tuesday usually. I'll just pr probably do it on Tuesday. So you study over the weekend, and then um, by Tuesday, um, you, can, you come in and take a quiz. There's written homework. That's where 10% of your grade. Um, the list of homework problems is on the second to last page, I believe. And we'll discuss that a little bit um, a bit later. Um, but that's where you'll get your written homework. The, the textbook we're using is the Single Variable Calculus by Stewart. You can buy the entire book, especially if you have to go beyond Calc 2, and you know you need to do Calc 3 and higher. You can buy the, the, the larger book. But we use the Single Calculus version, the 8th edition by Stewart. Um, and that's where your homework problems are going to be taken from. Uh, 
participation, so I am giving you points for attendance, and hopefully, I like when you guys talk back to me and we kind of have an engagement going on so I can kind of know um, where you guys are following me when you're not, so um, participate in class, all that, and I, I will be taking attendance pretty much every class. Um, usually if I give a quiz, I'll probably use the quiz as the attendance, but other than that, I'll be roll calling, it'll help me learn your names and so on, um, so there's also that. Um, there are going to be in-class tests as well. Um, their dates are to be announced, but their relative positions, again, you can see in the topics list. So um, the tests are not cumulative. So the exam one is only on these topics here. Exam two will only be on these topics. Exam three is only on these topics. Exam four is only on these topics. The final is cumulative. So the final is everything. Um, so you should expect exam one after we complete section 6.8, for example. And I'll, I'll kind of announce when the exam is coming up. You'll know roughly within a week or so before an exam is going to come up. But that's where they will relatively fall um, in line. So that's how you do that. And again, you can see here, these are the sections we're going to be covering. And these are the assigned problems that we will be, you, you'll have to do for homework that, that are from the textbook. Okay. Um, there's also a recitation section to this class. It's in the room next door. Um, I believe that's on Wednesdays at 10.30. Um, so in that class, I'd, I'd rather you use it to actually go over homework problems and things like that. So um, some of these homeworks are hefty, so you should for sure attempt them on your own, but anytime you're stuck with anything, recitations where you're going to kind of clear up your confusion and, and any misunderstandings that you might have from class. I'm not going to devote too much time in class on going over homework, so that's what the recitation is going to help you with. So here I'm more mostly going to be introducing you to the ideas and talking about the important ideas you're going to want to apply to the homework and apply to solving problems and, and apply to how you want to think about these things. But um, recitation is where you're going to do your homework. Um, but do attempt the problems on your own first, right? Don't go in there cold turkey and, oh, Right? Try them first, and then go and discuss them with um, your recitation leader and your classmates. Okay? Um, and again, there's the final exam. That's 35% of your grade, and that one is cumulative. And I might even count it for more than that, especially if I realize that you do well um, on, the, on the final, because that is everything from the beginning. So even if you had a rocky start, and I realize on the final you, you really mastered those topics now, I'm not going to count it against you. Um, yes, moving on to the next page. Makeup, standard makeup policy, um, only for very good documented reasons, like medical emergencies or death in the families or things like that. Um, you can talk to me. Uh, a little blurb on attendance, about I'll be taking attendance at the beginning of class. Um, don't accumulate more than five unexcused absences. And I talk about how you can get excused for an absence or lateness here. Um, Okay, let's talk about expectations. Work ethic, don't slack off. This class is actually pretty tough um, in the sense that we really have a lot of ground to cover. Calc 2 is one of those really densely packed uh, curriculum. So we're going to have a lot of topics to get through. So you really don't want to kind of, oh, I'll wait till the first test and study the day before. You're going to get in trouble. Start from day one, start working hard, start doing the homework. Always stay on top of it, right? Because once you slip, it's going to be hard to catch up in, in this class in particular. Calc 2, out of all the calculus sequences, I think, is probably the most packed one. Um, so you'll have less leeway here than you will have in Calc than you had in Calc 1, and then you will have in Calc 3, I'm pretty sure. Um, so um, don't underestimate the class. Um, try to read ahead. Um, if you have the textbook, you can read ahead in the textbook. Um, you can Google things, check uh, Paul's online math notes or YouTube or whatever. But just try to get your, your head working on the ideas before we actually cover them in class. That will actually be a lot uh, better for you. And you don't have to understand it fully, but have some sort of idea of what we'll be talking about. It's because you have all the topics, you know ahead of time what I'll be talking about. Um, so you should do that. Okay, so section on homework. So this talks about the homework. Um, they will be written. You'll hand them in to me. 
and you must hand them in according to these specifications here. So there are five points, and if you have any questions about those points. Basically, show all your work, um, staple it, label your homework properly, write neatly, things, things of that sort. Um, and again, I, I will be grading for the homework. Prerequisites, of course you need Calc 1. Um, if you're in this class, I would assume that you did 1206, or it's equivalent. And I will assume that you have mastered the material. So I'm not going to be going over, oh, here's how you differentiate x squared. I expect you to remember all that stuff. Okay, so if you don't remember all that stuff, you need to take this weekend, again, don't put it off. Make sure by this weekend you're on top of your Calc 1. I'm going to assume you know, remember how to differentiate things, how to apply the power rule, the quotient rule, the chain rule, um, the product rule. I'm going to assume you know how to do implicit differentiation. I will assume you know how to find the equation of a tangent line. Uh, I will assume you know how to integrate, find the area under a curve, and how you can integrate using techniques up to integration by substitution. Okay. So there's like regular integration with the power rule and there's integration by substitution. I'm going to assume you know that. When we start doing integration techniques, we're going to pick up after that with integration by parts. Okay, so I am going to expect you to um, um, remember your calculus. Of course, remember your pre-calculus and algebra as well. Um, so be sure you know how to simplify things, how to factor, how to do limits, um, how to solve equations, solve inequalities, um, deal with polynomials of all types. Um, sketching curves, we're actually going to, going to do some curve sketching as well, um, and that will help you as well in Calc 3, so um, sketching is something you will be doing. Um, moving on um, to a section called blasphemies. So at this point, you guys are experienced enough to, to be above certain mistakes. So there are certain mistakes that you will make in this class that will be unforgivable. Okay, so because they're unforgivable, I just want to illustrate some of them to you now so that you can't say I never mentioned to you what these were or I didn't know, okay? But there are some things that um, a relatively mature math student should know that they should not do. Do not do under any circumstance. or if they have a gun to your head or whatever, you don't do these things ever. Okay, so one of these things is canceling across sums. Right? So what do I mean by canceling across sums? So for example, if you, you see something like 2x plus 1 all over 2, and you're like, <gasps> I can cancel the 2's. No, you cannot cancel the 2. Right? That is a very big mistake. Why? Because there's a sum of terms. There's a plus sign here. You cannot cancel if there's a plus or a minus separating terms. Right? So by sum, I meant the, the general form. It could be plus or minus. Um, so if it's 2x minus 1, you still cannot cancel because there's a minus sign here. Right? You can only cancel across multiplication and division. This is a very basic rule of algebra, but students often forget it. So if things are multiplying, now you can cancel the twos. Okay, but without the parentheses there, you can't cancel the twos. Okay, so that is called canceling across sums. It is illegal, and you'll be penalized very heavily for it. Another thing that you should not be doing is distributing powers across sums. Again, a very common mistake in algebra and pre-calc and um, depending on the class, Calc 1, but I do not expect you guys to be doing this. So you do not distribute powers across sums. What do I mean by that? So if you see something like x plus 2 all squared, and you write x squared plus 4. No, that is not x squared plus 4. Right? You can't just square the x and square the 2. You can't do that. You can't distribute a power across a sum. Okay? What is this, by the way? What is x plus 2 all squared? Quickly. Plus 4x plus 4. Right, so you have to do the foil. You know that a plus b all squared is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Right, so I do not expect you to be able to make those mistakes. Um, sometimes less obvious is when you have radicals. That also applies to radicals, right? So if you write this guy, 
is you know, you know, radical x plus 2 or something like that, that is also incorrect. Because what you did was you distributed a power across the sum. Because a radical is actually a power in disguise. What is radical? One half. It's one half power. So by you squaring the x and squaring the 4, what you're actually doing is distributing the power across the sum. Okay, so you do not want to do that. You cannot separate these things with pluses or minuses. Okay, so you can't cancel if there are pluses and minuses in the way. Um, you can only cancel across multiplication. You cannot distribute powers across pluses or minuses. Um, you can only do that with multiplication. Okay. Is that the main? My first semester teaching at the last college I was at didn't have a bell. I'm like, is that someone's phone? Is that what is that? Okay. Huh? There's that every hour. Huh? Oh great. Sorry, quick question. With yeah. the cancelling across sums, it'd be still correct like if you wrote x minus one over two, right? Yeah. Yes, this is okay. the same as x minus one over two. Like okay. that. Yes. Okay. Right. So so if you have two x minus one all over two, you can write this two x over two minus one over two, and in here you have multiplication, you can cancel that. Okay. So yes. Thanks. But don't, don't I I've seen students who would make a mistake like they do this and then they write x minus one as the answer. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. Right? Because they just got rid of the twos. Yeah. Right? That that's something I see um, relatively commonly. Okay. Um, dividing by zero. I know uh, sometimes students study limits and they have this idea that you can divide by zero. Um, you can't, right? Dividing by zero doesn't make any sense. And, um, but we'll, we'll talk more about limits as well. Um, so don't divide by zero. Well, not zero factorial, zero. Um, we'll talk about factorials later as well. Um, so, like, some of that 1 over 0 is meaningless. Right? So, um, you might see things like the limit as x approaches 0, say, like 1 over x squared. That would be, does ever, anyone know what that is? It's infinite. Right, and so sometimes students think that, oh, what we did was we substituted the zero, and one over zero gives you infinity. But that's not necessarily true. This is a limit. You're not actually plugging in zero. You're just getting closer and closer to zero. It's a very different thing from being at zero, right? Another thing that can illustrate that you can't just take that as a rule, what is this? Plus or minus infinity, depending on which limit you are finalizing. Yes, but what does it mean to be plus or minus infinity? It means like it does not exist. Right? Because remember, for a limit to exist, the directions have to, whether you're coming from the right or the left, you should get the same answer. In this case, remember that this graph looks like that. If you're coming from the right, you're going to positive infinity. If you're coming from the left, you're going to negative infinity. So this actually doesn't exist. Right? So you're dividing by zero. It's something that doesn't make any sense. And things can change depending on where you are. Um, but you can never actually get to zero. With limits, you're just approaching zero. You never actually get to a point where there's a zero in the denominator. Even writing that down is blasting. You don't divide by zero. Okay. Um, so I don't think you guys studied logarithms in your Cal class. So probably um, point four you won't be familiar with, but we will be familiar with. I will give you those rules, and you'll see what I'm talking about when we get to that mistake. Another mistake is Think of um, not doing the product rule or the quotient rule when you should, things like that, right? So the derivative of a product is not the product of the derivatives, right? The derivative of the quotient is not the quotient of the derivatives, right? So things like that I expect you to know. That also applies to integrals. If you have, you're integrating a multiplication of two things, you can't just integrate each piece individually. It's not going to work. That's actually incorrect. Okay, so that's another thing. Um, six is not necessarily something that you shouldn't do, but it's something that I'd rather you do. And that is, use your parentheses properly, right? So, let's say I told you that f of x is on like x squared minus 1, and I asked you to compute what is f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. How would you compute that? 
x plus h squared minus 1. And you can put all of that in parentheses if you wanted to. You could, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, minus parentheses x squared minus 1. Okay, so in particular, when after a subtraction sign, open parentheses, just to be safe. Even if it's one term, just do it. Okay, you're not going to be penalized for extra parentheses, but you can get in trouble. All right, but you can get in trouble for not having them because this sign has to distribute. Okay, and if you don't put the parentheses there, you might forget. You could even put parentheses here. They're not necessarily, but it's not going to be wrong if you do it. So if you're not even sure, just do it anyway. You're not going to get in trouble. Um, but not doing it, you can get in trouble. And a lot of times I see what students do is they, they kind of get sloppy, they're rushing, and they, they kind of say, oh, in my head I know it's there and I know the sign has to distribute. But the thing is when you're in a test and you're rushing and I'm like, five minutes left, and you start to freak out, you're not going to remember, right? You're, you're doing a 10-step problem and then on problem step nine, you look back up and you don't see that parentheses, you're going to make a mistake down here, but you're not going to remember. Okay, so I see students have made that mistake all the time. So use your parentheses. Um, don't be, they're free to use. Don't be stingy with them. And especially if you're doing something like um, having um, subtracted something, put it in parentheses. Another thing is if you have the chain rule, right? So if you're differentiating a composite function, that's the chain rule. What is this, by the way? How do you differentiate f of g of x? Yeah? f prime of g of x times uh, g prime of x. Another thing that will often happen here in the chain rule is that your sorry, g prime is that the g prime will have several terms. So you usually will have to need, need to put parentheses here as well, right? So things like that you need to remember, right? Use your parentheses. They're going to be important. You can get into a lot of trouble for not using. Them. Okay, so if you're multiplying by something that has several terms, use parentheses. If you're subtracting something, use parentheses. Okay, um, even if it doesn't, you can literally just always put them, and you, and you won't get in trouble. Okay, even if you're like, oh, subtracting a one. Okay, put in. It's not going to make a difference, right? But not using them can can make a, a huge difference. So things like that you need to be aware of. Um, and yes, if we're doing indefinite integrals, I do expect you to remember to put a plus c. So if you have something like the integral of x squared dx, what is that? 2x <laughs> plus c. Huh? I mean, not, not x cubed over 3 yeah, plus c. Okay, yes, remember that plus c. Okay. So the only time you don't put a plus c when you're doing an integral is if you're doing what's called a definite integral. So let's say we're doing something like 1 to 2 of x squared dx. How do you do that? You would do what you did on the top and then just plug in and subtract. Okay, so yeah, so the notation is you draw that bar and you put the 2 here and the 1 here and then you apply what we call the fundamental theorem of calculus, one of the versions. And it basically says you put the top number, you plug it in minus, no, oh, minus, right? Make it a knee-jerk reaction. Oh, I put a minus sign. Put parentheses there, and then take the bottom number and you plug it in. So there's one term here. Technically, you don't need the parentheses, but just, just be safe and put it. Okay. Um, they suck at video editing. Okay. So we where were we? Okay, yes. Um, electronic help you can get online. So Wolfram Alpha, great resource. Uh, Symbol Lab, also great resource. YouTube, Khan Academy, Paul's Online Math Notes. Literally just typing a topic into Google will usually get you good results um, if you need a quick reference or anything like that. And uh, don't forget your classmates as well. You guys will be together in recitation, but it's, I highly encourage you to get the contact information from someone else in class that you can discuss homework with or, or, or talk to if you get missed miss a class or anything like that. Um, moving on to the next page. So you'd have student disability services here. So if you have a disability that you think might affect you in class, it's good to check in with them during the first week or so. Here's their web link. 
if you want to find more information like their location or how to contact them and, and what your um, if you can have accommodations. Um, class rules, the usual, don't use the cell phones, pay attention, engage me in class. Um, no eating but drinking is allowed, I understand if you need your coffee. Um, I might have a cup of coffee with me every now and then, um, so that's okay. Of course, the usual blurb on academic integrity, don't cheat. You know what cheating is, if you don't know, you should go to that link. Um, these are some important days for the semester. It's not the complete calendar, but it's just some things that it might be important to um, some of you. Um, so you can see that. So classes begin here. Um, probably one important thing. I'm hearing sounds all over the place. This fucking thing and beeps and, and clocks going off. Okay. Um, last day to withdraw from the class is. March 21st, for example. Okay, so that's an important date. So hopefully you will be you'll be you will be in the groove by then. You, you would have had enough quizzes and tests to be able to say for sure if you're doing well in the class. And so you might know if you want to stick around or not. After that date, you're here to stay. Um, you know, spring recess days that were closed, reading days, and your final exam. Um, our particular exam hasn't been scheduled yet, but once it's scheduled, it will be during that week. So don't plan on traveling during that week. So May 8th to May 15th. Okay, so like I said, the next page is the list of topics. We'll be covering these topics in this class. These are the topics, this is the section, and these are the assigned problems. Exams will show up in these positions, right? Um, so I can't say exactly how long I will spend on each topic, but I will be going in this order. Okay, so I'll always be going in this order, so you you know what to expect. Yeah. So uh, the assignments, for example, the first one, yeah. uh, that will be due tomorrow. Then, so it's assigned on the on the. So assignments they're due after I complete the topic in class. Okay, so if I'm doing a topic and I'm like, okay. That was it for this topic, let's move on to the next topic. That topic I just completed is due the next class. So the assignments are not scheduled either, they're on a rolling basis. So once I complete something on the board, the assignment for that is due next time. So there could potentially be two due for the class after Yes, one there could potentially be. If I cover two topics in a class, um, which probably won't happen. Yeah. Well, it might. Well, it might happen later on. Yeah, so you'll have all that homework due the following class. Or yeah. conversely, if we only cover you know, part of one topic in a class. Then it's not, then nothing is due. Okay? So when I complete a topic, that's when the homework is due. Um, so that's how homeworks are, are assigned. They're on a rolling basis based on what I've actually covered. Um, quizzes, though, it's every Tuesday. You'll have a quiz. Okay? Um, and the tests will happen in these positions. Okay, so second question. Yes. Uh, so I, hopefully I'm not only speaking for myself here, but I, I imagine some people haven't quite gotten a textbook yet. Okay. Um, and it might take a few days to do that. Is it possible to put some, like the first couple problem pages up in case we don't have it by this weekend or something like that? Uh, do I have the page? I think I'll be able to do that, sure. Um, probably email me and remind me, which sure. so I have it here now. That's good. Okay. Yeah, so I will be able to do that for you. Um, so the first few topics, for at least the first week or so. Um, I'm not sure, but they might even have the textbook in the library as well, so you might want to check on that, but, you know, so you can just check it out temporarily. Um, but yeah, so that's that. Um, and then, last page is the questionnaire, so I'd like you to fill that out and then just attach it, and then hand it back to me at the end of class. I'll be posting the, the classes online. You'll be able to find the link on the, my web page. So once you go to the web page. Anything else? Yeah.
Yeah. So your first assignment is not doing well, right? No, I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, anything else before we go? Okay. So that's it. Just pass the questionnaires to the front row. I'll just collect them from up here and then I'll see you guys tomorrow. You too, take care.